This is where Caleb PhD. And my PhD stands for Post Hole Digger. By now, we have seen an awful lot of action in the United States. We're talking at the beginning of January. We're not yet in two weeks, let alone three weeks into January of 2021. And we have already seen so much commotion by the President of the United States. So my question is, what is it? Are we in a relationship with the body of Christ by sharing the same preferences and outlooks and how do we understand the world? See, my question is, are we in a relationship with the body of Christ? And if we are, does Trump openly control the body of Christ? Because the scary part, if we see what is happening, how he controls people either through threats, intimidation, of assistance, I don't know for sure, but the reports I'm reading is with assistance from foreign countries. Some of them have been transferring over large amounts of crypto coins in order to get the people moving. So nothing happens because they sheer love Mr. Trump. Somebody somewhere is trying to rile the people up. And my question to you is, why are we seeing all this commotion? Because if we understand the concept of being a father of Yeshua HaMashiach, which most people know as Jesus, then we come to a different understanding. But what is wrong with us today? Is it correct that the Pope, Pope Francis, pointed his finger at Mr. Trump a little while ago, and he openly pointed out that Trump was not a Christian? And when Pope Francis says it, when he met at the Mexican-U.S. border, he said a person who thinks only about building walls wherever they may be and not of building bridges is not a Christian. Now, my question is, is Pope Francis right? Are you a Christian and are you controlled by Mr. Trump or are you under control of Mr. Trump? Because the question I had for so long, and understand, I am talking as a person that is a believer. I am no longer a Christian based on the oxymorons that I have noticed. I am now in my 71st anniversary. That means very soon I will be 71 and I will have been married for 45 years. And it is only because of the grace of God and the tremendous patience of my wife, because I sure made my share of mistakes. But learning the concept of being a Christian for me was normal. I was raised a Christian. I was six years old when my mom died and then we all went to an orphanage for seven years. When my father remarried, my mom or stepmother at that time had her ideas of raising kids. She never had one. So raising five kids from somebody else, that was a challenge by itself. And I did not fit the picture. So very shortly thereafter, I was on my own. And so I had to learn things a little different. Although I did go from the street to Bible school, from Bible school seminary, or actually vice versa, first seminary, then Bible school, practical Bible school, preaching for 12 years in a prison ministry, on and off all over the world, actually. And by the grace of God, I started to get a grip and grab the understanding and I, when I say grab, it was actually not me doing anything. It was just weird stuff that did not make sense. Why is Christianity constantly attacking each other? I've seen people that were saved by grace and then they started their own church or they started a organization. And for some strange reason, all of a sudden weird stuff started to happen. And I never liked weird stuff because I don't believe that you can control me in believing what I ought to believe. Because there is a difference of opinion, you can still be brothers. But like I said, I was raised basically, I was kicked out on the street. So living on the street, you get a different perspective. And although I had a chance to finish my studies or at least complete my studies, I learned more being married 
than I ever really learned in the church. My wife, when we met, she was raised in a Muslim community. Her mom was a devout Muslim. And the beauty of it is that looking at it from a different perspective and getting people to appreciate each other for what you are, that is what I understand is what God is all about. So I like to ask you the question again, who is Mr. Trump? Does Trump openly control the body of Christ? I hope that by now you understand and I use the word oxymoron not as a word to make you look or feel like a fool but an oxymoron is something that they say one way and they mean it another way it's a contradiction and as a person that writes and particularly almost 20 years in court in Canada in the criminal court system you learn that basics are very important and so I like you to go back with me to the very beginning of Christianity because otherwise there is no way that we can understand what is going on under the evangelicals those that are supporting Mr. Trump because Mr. Trump and the Pope met and Mr. Trump wanted to make an impression and the Pope just said you are not a Christian so my question is are we Christians and what does a Christian mean? See, if we know the basic, if we know the foundation of the word Christianity, then we can answer a whole bunch of other questions. Because Mr. Trump is a certain individual. But if we enable Mr. Trump to do what he is doing, then we have a major problem. And that problem is right now apparent because he's been before the House and he is impeached for the second time. It turns out that as they are un, um, unloading the White House or cleaning up the White House from the mess, it apparently has a lot of weird little corners, dirt, and lots of dirt. And that dirt has to be removed and it costs almost half a million dollars. Well, I know how to spend a half a million dollars. I've done it. I know how to uh, make a building nice, but it doesn't have to cost you half a million dollars. So what else is Mr. Trump hiding from us? And yet Christianity is in a stupor at the moment. You don't hear them any sing, you don't hear them say anything, they don't take a position. Yet very few people had no opinion a month or two ago. Because thus says the Lord, Paula White, Sid Roth, John Hakey, Kenneth Copeland, Pat Robertson, and many others. They all had the word from God because they, and that is the evangelicals, overwhelmingly supported President Trump since they believed that he would cause the world to end. Now, I tell you one thing, the way he acts, the way he bankrupts everything, I totally agree that he is capable of bankrupting the United States. And many wonder why devout evangelicals support even Trump. Someone is bragging about his sexual assaults. Someone who, when he opens his mouth, lies continuously. Someone who admitted that he never asked God for forgiveness. Trump lacks the knowledge of the Bible, and that we all know. When he had a photo op and he used the riot police in order to go across the street to a little church to hold the Bible, he didn't even realize the Bible was upside down. So we don't have to worry about his knowledge. But we want to know why the evangelicals overwhelmingly supported this man. Now, we are not talking hypothetically because there is something that either mixes with Mr. Trump's his lifestyle or there is a confusion among the evangelicals. Now, Jesus said that he would return. We all remember the time that Jesus was crucified on the cross 
and or he was crucified period because some people believe it was a cross another person was a beam the fact was Jeshua rose again and after he went to the father he endowed his disciples but who were those disciples they were people that had been with Jeshua at least seven years and over a period of seven years he called them the men of light the children of light there was a covenant agreement now with the children of light but who were the children of the light they were the ones that made the decision to follow the way the truth and the light and why was that so important evangelicals say well just accept jesus and just pray after me and you're a christian okay i can accept that that is what you say but what does the bible say what does god say see those are very important issues because in court if you present a case before the judge and i have seen many 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 judges and i spent uh, almost uh, 20 years in court uh, 12 years by myself with my wife and we spend on average four to eight hours a day for a minimum of six months and over the 12 years we spend so many hours in front of judges that you learn to understand what the law states and god says he is the law and god had a covenant agreement now why is that so important because the covenant agreement was for those that had failed god almighty see god had said to adam and eve do not touch that tree of life and they said okay but then somebody smarter who had a alternative he wanted them to fail and so beelzebub he was an angel of light and he came to eve is it true psst, psst. is it true and as he found out that she had no knowledge and understanding she picked up the fruit ate of it and had adam eat as well right away they had to be disconnected from god because that is what happened they were no longer in the presence of god and satan got what he wanted he became actually the one that ruled the world adam and eve they lost the connection with god but in the time that adam was a, an apprentice of god almighty the creator he had learned certain things and he passed that on to his sons and a great 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 grandson was called Enoch and Enoch walked with God and 365 years he lived and God said you know why don't you come up with me and Enoch was no more and why do we know that name Enoch was the father of Methuselah and most people know that that man became almost a thousand years old so they were trained in the words and the communication that Adam used to have with God and God had said so much and shared with them how they could live forever and that is what Satan is offering us he said oh you want to be a biohacker wonderful this is what you need to do that is what you need to do and by the way you can make lots of money lots of money and it's always lots of money and when we go back to Mr. Trump what is the main objective of Mr. Trump. Very important that his hair is right, which I can relate to. And I can understand that he wants to look sharp on TV. And that's why I just dress this normal. I don't have to pretend. And he wants to be the superstar because his problem is he is a narcissist. And a narcissist loves himself so much. He loves himself just a little bit more than God loves him. And so now we come back to Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve had, had tasted the love of God, the presence of God, and being around God. And see, and that is the meeting that we are aiming for. We want to go back, restorative justice. We want to go back to the presence of God. When we are in His presence, guess what happens? Then we are overcomers. And so when Enoch showed and shared with his sons what happened there was only one noah who picked up on that and noah trained his other sons 
and a few understood what was happening, why we need to be in the presence of the Lord. And finally, there was another man by the name of Moses. Moses, he was a man trained in the spiritual aspect of Egypt. Those were false gods and other gods, but he had also a link to the Jewish people because his mom was Jewish. I don't want to go on the whole story, but the bottom line is Moses got one morning a call from God. Moses come up on the mountain and Moses did so. And guess what happened? When Moses got up on the mountain, he got a covenant agreement for the children of light. And how do we know that? You see, for 60 years I've been preaching, sharing and traveling, but also I have been disgusted. They call it backsliding. There was a time that I did not want to go to church. I did not want to meet anybody because I was so fed up with the oxymorons all the contradictions, things that you do that are explained different because everyone has a opinion. In the process, I got excommunicated three times. And you wonder what in the world is going on with the believers, the body of Christ. And by the grace of God, the Lord opened my eyes and I started understanding what God was looking for. God is looking for the prodigal son and I wrote a book about it. I started writing when I was in maximum security. I was serving a time, six years times three. Maximum security in Canada. And I tell you, when you sit in your cell and you have 22 hours to yourself and two hours that you can walk the yard, you got to think about an awful lot. And I started writing and writing and writing and writing. It took me seven years to write and, and then to put the book together. The, pro the Deception Protocol with a prodigal son blueprints. And I published it last year on Amazon. But in the process, I was asked to prepare a video to introduce it. And as I got used to the videos, I realized that I had to get out of the, first of all, to get rid of your pain and sorrow. Whatever happened during that time, whatever we lost during that time, it doesn't matter. But what we gained was the peace of God the love of God, the understanding of being in the presence of God Almighty. And folks, that is what this is all about. And so the understanding of the evangelicals with regards to Mr. Trump, it is scary because they think that Mr. Trump will help them come get to the ends of the world. Folks, if you get to the end of the world and this world is going to collapse, you won't see God. Because you're a Christian, you won't make it. Because Christianity is not based on the foundation that God had told us to do. Yes, folks, if you read my book, Deception Protocol for the Prodigal Son Blueprint, it is sensitive, it is sad, but we have been hoodwinked like Mr. Trump has been hoodwinked. Mr. Trump has had some problems in his life. He's a self-made billionaire, but he forgets to tell you that he inherited $453 million from his daddy. And that was mostly real estate, which automatically increased. So he was a billionaire. He also forgot to mention that he was able to screw it up five times at least. He was also able to get us in a predicament where the society as a whole is suffering. The pandemic. 375,000 Americans dead. 4,000 people a day are dying in the United States of this pandemic. The problem that we have is we as a society, so we cannot blame this Trump, but we as a society need to get our acts together. And if we do not understand that we don't need to start a war in order to cause the end time, the end time will come, don't you worry. 
But God says that we need to do something if we want to be part of the kingdom of God. And that is more important than you being a fool running around after Mr. Trump in an attack on the Capitol because you believe Mr. Trump is going to get you to the end time. Oh, he will. He will destroy everything and everyone just to get a few more bucks out of you. You see, the city of Jerusalem is very important. But when God spoke about the third temple, he was talking about a complete different temple. We don't need to restore the temple of Jerusalem. And I know John Hagee raised millions and millions and millions of dollars because of Jerusalem. But I'm sorry to say, but Mr. John Hagee, you are wrong. Yes, sir, you are wrong. Because you know, as well as I know, that God says we need to follow the way, the truth, and the light. And why is that? Because that is a small path. See, there is a broad way, Christianity. Yes, sir, I call the broad way Christianity. And the small way is the way, the truth, and the light. Because that is where the presence of God is. God himself will give you all that you need when you follow his way. Not the way that your folks are telling you. I had the same problem, fellows. I went to the Bible schools. I spent and in the ministry. I preached my heart out and I loved it. I was in the Jesus movement. But you know what? If we do not understand our foundation, you will come out a loser. Just like Mr. Trump. He is now for a second time impeached. Wow, what a record. But I had enablers and they were the Christians, the body of Christ. Why are we in such a shambles? Why are we in such a sorry mode? Folks, why don't we get together and focus on what God wants us to do? Did God tell you to focus on Trump? Or was it your pastor because he made a deal with the devil? So he gets a better understanding and financial position so the church can keep more money. They don't have to pay taxes. They get a special judge. Folks, if you really know where those judges are coming from, you don't want to know. Yes, you are in a pickle. We all are if we don't go back to restorative justice. Because restorative justice, the true restorative justice, is when God gets united with his children, the prodigal sons and daughters. And that is you and me. And folks, that is what we're aiming for. Now, I realize that we have to go back to the year 70 AD, when the temple got destroyed. Around that time, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus, had just been killed. He had risen from the death and people were confused. And then there was an outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon the disciples, the children of light. See, the first followers of Yeshua, the first 300 years, they were Jewish, trained, Young people knew one thing, one God. There is one God. There is only one God. And Jesuit never called himself a God. He came to fulfill the will of God. And when he did that, he opened the door and God said, Now that is the way and that is the truth and that is the light I want you to follow. And so what do we do? We start praying to Jesuit, Jesus. And we call the messenger God. Now, where does that come from? That comes from Constantine the First, an emperor of Rome in 325 AD. Folks, you gotta understand your foundation. That's why my PhD is called Post Hole Digger. I had to dig and dig and dig. And I had the privilege of having a farm for a while. So I understand what it means. If you don't have a solid foundation, your soil will sink. And if you build your house, it will eventually fall. And what we have seen with Mr. Trump, it will eventually come down on your face. 
And that is what I want you to realize. No matter what happens, folks, if you are following the way, the truth, and the light, then God himself is there to teach you. He will teach you. His angels will be standing by to help you. And as you learn to talk with angels, as you learn to work with angels in the field, like Yeshua told us, then we will become overcomers because it is God himself that will be teaching us. Now, don't you want to have the best teacher in your life? That is what I'm talking about, folks. That is the power of following the presence of God, being in the presence of God, because God loves you so much. But there is a time when this world will eventually come to a point that we will have to surrender. And maybe Mr. Trump is going to be helping you. I don't know. But I know one thing, I don't need him. I have God Almighty. And I know that I can follow him. And why is that? Because Whatever Trump is, God isn't there. Yes, folks. So if you want to follow Trump, then I congratulate you because you will be one of the virgins that will hear, sorry, I don't know you. But if you're dealing with a doubt, if you don't know for sure which way to go, folks, may I urge you, to seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, and he will open the door for you because God loves you. Does God love Mr. Trump? Of course. Do we have to hate Mr. Trump? No. The man is hoodwinked himself. Money is just an enticer. Satan tries it with everyone. Trump fell for it. His buddies fell for it. Uh, they use violence. People get killed, but they're mistaken because it is only for the love of God that I got changed. God changed me because through the whole ordeal of being stripped from everything, I got the understanding what God really means. And sometimes, folks, you have to lose everything. Unfortunately, I was wrong and I had to learn to seek the Lord. And when I fell flat on my face, just like the prodigal son, being in the middle of the biggest heap of manure, and when you're on the farm, you call it shit, okay? And when you're falling flat on your face and you don't know where you're going, call out to the Lord and seek you first his kingdom. And that is the way, the truth and the light. It's a small path. It's not easy. And sometimes we allow things to happen before we are willing to listen. But I tell you one thing, I'm so grateful because I know that my God is an awesome God. He loves you and he cares for you. So this pandemic, we can turn this around. If we want to know why this pandemic is happening, it's not because of God. It's because we chose the wrong path to follow. Yes, folks, I can tell you so much but you need to get it in little steps because most people are now more that they can focus for two seconds and then they forget what you were saying. So we need to keep it simple. Tickle his ears is not funny. It's a disease and you need to repent of it. But folks, I want you to know that God loves you and so do I. I love Mr. Trump. If he repents, he's more than welcome. But the way he's holding up and holding out and continues to lie, Liars won't enter the kingdom of God. But so does your pastor know if they lie and say this is what God said. And Mr. Trump wasn't re-elected because Mr. Trump was a loser. And if your pastors and your leaders are not acknowledging that, that they were wrong and they repent, they are the same as Mr. Trump. You harden your heart. Folks, that is not how God works. God forgives us. He doesn't care that you have done stupid, that you are a sinner. He loves you. But you need to do one thing. And that's the most difficult thing in our lives. We need to get a paradigm shift. We need to repent. Yes, folks, you need to repent. And if you really want to know what a Christian means, then go and figure it out like I had to do. But don't be insulted if you find out that people have been lying to you most of your life. Like for me, 
me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. And yes, I had to share this with my wife and my kids that I am no longer a Christian. I am a follower of the way, the truth and the light. I'm a child of the light now. And God's light can shine through me. And I'm willing to learn because God says, I will give you so much more. Now, is that important? It is extremely important. Because if you truly want to have the peace in your heart during this awesome time, it's a terrible time where people, oh folks, people are dying. So many thousands a day. Hospitals are overwhelmed. Can you help out and be honest with yourself? Be honest. If you're not satisfied, reach out and seek the Lord the way he wants to be found. And that is through the way, the truth, and the light. Now remember, tough times never last. Tough people, they do. Bye for now.
Where to hide. 